recording. Cool. All right. So okay. excellent. We are here, New Earth. Right. Whoop. <laughs> Sorry, I'm recording too. All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to New Earth Rising. We're so excited you're here, and we are so excited for our guest today, Jaylene Tracy. She talks to space yeah. bugs, and it's <laughs> awesome. She's here. She communicates with the mantids and also with the Arcturians, so I'm super, super excited. So I am Michelle Ambergy. I am the Awakener, one of many, and many of you guys are Awakeners too. And this is New Earth Rising, where we talk about all of the fun stuff. And so we're super happy that you're here. My, my hostess with the mostest, I never know which side you're on, is Sharon. Yeah. Sharon, thank you so much. I love doing this show with you. It's so much fun. Oh, thank so you, Michelle. Awesome. I've missed you. We haven't seen each other in a couple of weeks, so... It's nice to see your beautiful face again. Thank you. It's nice to see you too. Yeah. And it's nice to feel better. I was not feeling good last week. Yeah. And I just well, said, I can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah. Well, um, yes. Thank you, Michelle. And we are very excited. I agree with Michelle. Jaylene is here to talk about the mantids. And I adore the mantids. <laughs> I have some experience with them, definitely. And so anyone that has experience as well, I've I want to hear about it. Yeah. So um, those of you who don't know me, I am Sharon Sanani Kumari, and I am a psychic medium, hypnotherapist, specialized in past life therapy with, uh, with that type of work and teach classes and just do all the kind of fun stuff that I can do. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to have another fun conversation. Very good. Yeah. And Jaylene, tell us about you. Jaylene Tracy, who is Jaylene Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a regular person who just happens to talk to giant bugs. <laughs> no, it just kind of worked out that way. Didn't actually intend on <laughs> that happening, but it, but it worked out that way. Um, so uh, I think it, if uh, anyone's familiar with my work, they know I have a background in science, but for those of you I haven't met yet, hello. And uh, I have a background in molecular biology and worked for many years in the biotech industry. Um, and then uh, took some time to spend more time with my kids. And during that time, I was able to take a lot of really fun classes and explore my other side, which is not, you know, the other side of my brain basically, and <laughs> start <laughs> developing the aspect of myself that was always there, but I hadn't really spent a lot of time fostering. And so, um, I got to take lots of Reiki and body talk and theta healing and explore all these different things. It was really, I was so grateful that I was able to do that and take that time to do that. And well, during that process, that's when I met the mantis beings and they're amazing. And of course, as we mentioned, they're very large. I mean, they look like they're about nine to 12 feet tall, you know, when you meet them and with their big triangular heads. And a lot of times they have big robes on. And, um, I really had absolutely no idea who I was talking to. All I knew was the energy was so amazing and they were so helpful. I was learning body talk and they just kept helping me to help others. They would help with the emotional healing and the energetic underpinnings of all the physical maladies that people had. And I just, that's how I met them. I didn't know anything about them or that some people, you know, had talked about how they were part of the abduction program, that they would, they would be there and things like that. All I knew were that these beings kept showing up every time I did a healing, always there, always heart centered. I mean, the most amazing heart feeling in my body when I would converse with them. And then they would help me transfer that to the person to help them feel held and seen and heard and understood um, and create healing from that place of being acknowledged, which I think a lot of people talk about when they have near-death experience. It's, they talk about that feeling of having um, for the first time in their life, full acceptance and, you know, feeling like you're whole and complete once again, when we return to source energy. And um, to me, the mantis represent 
like many archangels or other uh, very high vibrational beings, that little slice of source that when we connect with them, we have conversations with them that we get to remember that's who we really are. And we get to have a little experience of that, even if we are in these sort of seemingly separate bodies here. Once we connect to those types of beings, we get to, ah, I remember that's right. (laughs) And that's where the healing begins, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're so wonderful. And what's really cool is all three of us have had experiences with the mantids. Yes. So we brought the mantid pro on to talk (laughs) about all this stuff. And so Jaylene, tell us about when you first first, first met them? Like, what was that experience? You, you just kind of gave us a little bit of a taste, but give us a little bit more in depth. Like what happened? Okay. How did they show up? What did they do? Well, I was, um, I was learning body talk and our, my great teacher, uh, Laura Stuve taught us that every time you do a session, you have to get grounded first. And so I would do this process instead of just like popping my energy down into the earth and pulling it back up. I started doing this prolonged process where I would really connect down into the earth and I would visualize myself down there and I would um, spend time down there to really get grounded and centered. And it felt so good. And I would start sharing that with people when I was doing sessions, but I started to see myself in a room down there at first. And then I I saw a table and then, um, I mean, almost like something out of a, like a sixties, um, like lost in space episode or something, right. With uh, maybe that was the seventies, but <laughs> with like mainframe computers along the back wall. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And then this large, uh, table, like a conference table with chairs all around it. So first that's all I saw. And I would see that several times and I had no idea. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing in this room or what, what the thing is, but okay. And then I started to see beings sitting around it. One at the head of the table, she would always be standing. And I say she, because it's not that you could tell whether they're male or female by looking at them, but they energetically convey either more of a divine feminine or divine masculine type of energy uh, when you connect with them. And I'm a person who's very clairsentient. So I'm all about vibration and that's how I feel uh, things. And when I meet somebody, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm, I can tell you what your vibration is. I can't remember your name necessarily, (laughs) but I know you because of the way you vibrate. (laughs) So uh, yeah, if I've met you before, I remember you because I know how you vibrate. Anyway, that's how we recognize spirit too. Sorry to interrupt you, Julie. No, it's so true. Not at all. By their frequency, their energy signature. Yes. And that's good that you bring that up because I had been doing some meditations, um, with, uh, have you, have you heard of, uh, the Stargate, um, meditations with, um, I'm forgetting his name right now, but it'll come to me. But anyway, in those meditations, I was introduced to the Arcturians and the Pleiadians and I was, I'd gotten to know their vibration and the two of them are very different in the way that they vibrate. And so when I met the mantis, I didn't know that they were the mantis, but the vibration felt different again. So I thought, oh, this is different being, but I didn't know what they were. I just knew what they looked like. And so I would, I was doing some sessions for friends and a couple of them who are also psychic mediums commented on and asked who the being was in the room because the being the largest one who was at the head of the table, um, who I call Mari, Um, she would come up through the earth and into the room with me and sort of show me, walk me around the body and show me the different areas that were important to focus on. And um, a couple of my friends would say, who's that enormous being in the room, you know? And, and so that I didn't know whether I was making it up or not, honestly. And, (laughs) but when some people started commenting on it, I thought, okay. (laughs) And the information she was giving me was so pertinent to the person's healing and to where the origins of their um, disease state or whatever else emotional issue was coming from. That's how I met them. And so I really felt like once I met them, it just kind of blew open my awareness that these beings had actually been around me my entire life. I I started doing meditations with them. 
it really was that I had not stepped into service yet. And when I stepped into service and I would say I brought in aspects of my former third dimensional life with my metaphysical life that then they said, okay, you're putting the puzzle pieces together. And now this is where we step in and we start training you because I had already had the work with the DNA in college and in my, my work life, but I hadn't done the other piece where I had opened up, you know, my awareness and my energy body and my third eye and my connection to the other dimensions. I hadn't gotten to that. I was, I had that dial way down. And so I dialed that up. I had the other stuff, brought the two together. And then they said, okay, now it's time to reintroduce you to who we are. And, um, then after I figured that out, I had meditations with them and realized that they had been there when I was a baby, they showed me images of us together when I was in my crib and that, you know, I really feel like they're my family members. That's really how I feel about them. I don't know if you guys have that feeling about them too, but I, I, yes. they feel like family to me, um, that, that I'm just, I've been mantis before. I just have such a kindred connection with them. So it just feels kind of like family, I think is the best way to put it. And you know how family is sometimes it's like the way you want it to be. And sometimes, it isn't. you know, family members can be a little bossy with each other, but, um, you know, most of the time it's fantastic. Sometimes I ask for things and, and flat out, they're just like, no, we're not going to do that. And so, Oop. Oh, how funny. Yeah. We, it's a, but it's a great, it's a great relationship. Um, but we're, they're very clear with me what my goal is with them is that they are teaching me how to teach other people how to heal themselves. They want me to help empower people to understand themselves better and to heal themselves. Um, it's not so much about me going out and saying, Hey, I'm the mantis lady. It's more about me turning around and teaching people how to heal themselves. Right. Um, they're very clear on that. They're, you know, <laughs> right. I feel like that's all our mission is to help people remember that we have everything we need within us. I agree. I absolutely agree. And the disempowerment of humanity is whether it's, you know, purposeful or not, it, this is where we are. We we're in a fairly disempowered state and the more we can learn and remember who and what we are and how we have all of this amazing ability within us, then Right. things will get a lot better around here. Yeah. Yeah. We're, 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 we're a bit, wee bit tattered and, uh, you know, travel weary right now, I'd say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. So do you, Jaylene, I have a question for you. Do yes. you, um, recall being with on the ships or anything like that with them? I, I mean, I guess you were underground in some underground facility. Yeah. Right. So I've done past life regression work meditation on myself and have ha remembered experiences of being with them on other planets and on ships, but not this time when I'm here with them, it's always been in the earth because that's where they, that's where I met them. And that's where this particular group that I work with resides okay. in the, in the dimensional fields of earth, you could say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What color are the beings you work with? Because so, I understand there's different colors of mantids. Yeah, I that's true. What, yeah. Yeah. So the ones that I see to me, um, they don't look very bright. They look like more muted. Their colors are more muted, more like, mm -hmm. a, um, like a, I would say like a brown. Well, I don't know, dark, darkish. And they're like really honed in on exactly what color they are, but yeah. it's a darker color. It's, um, it's more, uh, um, like what is that color? It's kind of like a muddy color, like a brownish greenish, um, not super bright. Mm, okay. Um, but there, I, one thing I would say about Mari is that to me, she's golden. Like she has a golden glow about her nice. and she, mm. um, she's such a heart centered being that when I look at her, I just, I usually see a lot of light. Mm -hmm. coming from her. So I don't really see her as being a muted color. 
um, actually with all of them there, they all occur to me vibrationally as light beings in, in it. Um, I would say in more than, you know, just standing there as a, as a mantid, as a solid being. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's how I've seen them as light, pure, full of light that they are, but they're mantids. Yes. But they're, it, they're light. They're yes. emitting light. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the way I, I forgot to mention that I didn't know what they were. And I was having a session with a, um, another psychic and she told me, she said, oh, you have so many mantis around you. And um, I, the second she said it, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense because they look <laughs> like, they look like that. But I just, I thought they were some other, I, you know, you right. don't really know until you have the aha moment <laughs> or, the, or maybe if you'd had a, you'd seen them before. I just hadn't seen them before. Yeah. And I guess I doubt, I guess you're not going to come up to you and say, Hey, we're mantids. We're praying mantids. <laughs> well, you know, they might to somebody, they just didn't to me. I, I mean, I don't think it's like a point of importance for them. I don't think they right. really care. You know how they are. They're not, they're not concerned with the small stuff. They're, they're not picture. hung up on details, right? <laughs> they are not. They're big picture. They're in it for the long game. They are big picture, long game thinkers. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I I (laughs) wanted to share too, when we were talking about the colors, you know, Jaylene, I was working with you when I first actually had the mantids come up. Now I'd had an experience with them prior, but the one that I saw was blue, was beautiful blue, beautiful white energy around it. I remember you saying that. And that kind of just occurred to me when we were, you asked me that color, I was thinking, oh, where's the blue thing? It's you. It's yeah. You I the was blue. the, yeah. Yeah. And they're just so loving and so yeah. kind, but at the same time, no nonsense too. Very no nonsense. Yeah. Yes. And yes. I, I get silly and goofy and you just feel that like, like when grandpa used to be like, uh-huh. <laughs> right? like, of the vase. Oh, okay. that's what I'm talking about. That's why they're like family. And they're like, because I'm super silly and goofy too. Um, and when I was younger, not only was I silly and goofy, but I was also really kind of a wild child. So I think that they were kind of they're like, mm-hmm, wait and wait and wait and tap, 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 you know, <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as you get your little act together, we'll show up. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. my God. When I first came across <laughs> the first man to that, um, or that I, in my memory that I came across, he met me when I was doing doing a meditation to um to access my my akashic records and i was mad oh. by my my gatekeeper who was a a very tall uh light filled mantid wow and i just had this sense of reverence with him mm. for mm-hmm. him for him i felt mm. male energy coming from him yeah it, yeah but the no nonsense thing was uh, make sense but it was just a sense of reverence and um who i get emotional talking about him um yeah. so much love and caring and compassion that emanated from him and mm-hmm. and yeah. uh very kind like you said and um uh showed me through my through my records to to where i wanted to go ask me what i you know if there's anything i wanted to look at or anything like that although he yeah. probably already knew why i was there but, um, and then guided me to where I, um, could, could go. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I think they've gotten a bit of a bad rap on earth because we don't really understand what and who they are. So to me, they've always been very clear and very matter of fact about what they do. They, they seed life, right? DNA is their vehicle of seeding Mm -hmm. life and they seed life all over the universe and you could say interdimensionally. Um, and, and that's really what they do. They, they seed life and they watch, they observe, and they are intervening with us more now than they ever have, but they don't normally intervene a ton. They usually let things unfold, um, and have whatever beings that are created to for them to have their own experience, right. Free will, um, I guess we need a little nudge in the right direction so that <laughs> they have been showing up a quite a bit more. I would yeah. say in the past several years, I've mm-hmm. heard more and more people talking about them. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it was interesting. I wanted to share because you were saying, Jaylene, about how they've been misunderstood. Yes. Because my first experience with the mantids was probably 15 years ago, where I was at this. I used to be a speaker at the World uh, Healer Conference uh -huh. that was held down in San Diego, and it was amazing. And people from all over the world were there. It was so cool. Well, there were some people there that did uh, removed um, implants, right? Right. Extraterrestrial implants. So I'm like, oh, cool. You know, and I, I was kind of new in the thing. I'm like, oh, let's go do this, right? And so I come in, I go in the room and both of them are like, oh my God. I was like, what? I'm like, you need to sit down. This is really serious. I'm like, oh no, what is happening? And they're like, you have hundreds of mantids in your field and we have got to get rid of them before we oh, can do anything. Right. And they started right. removing the mantids right. and getting them out. And they said there were huge ones. There were tiny ones. Well, as they're doing them, because I'm so visual and plus sentient too, it's like I'm crying and I'm crying and I'm seeing them like being torn away. And I, I went back the second day, I went back again to get all of these mantids off of me. And then when they were gone, they're like, oh, well, you don't have any implants. But what happened was I was so raw. I think that they were there kind of protecting me, being mm -hmm. a part of my energy field right. at the time that I kind of went into a little bit of a tailspin mm -hmm. because they didn't understand. And they were there with the greatest of intentions, right. you know, and the people that were trying to help, but they didn't understand the mantids. They saw them as something that was not necessarily positive. They saw yeah. them as something that wasn't there with my acquiescence, right. even though if there were that many in there, somebody said yes. Right? Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> They're not it's, parasitic at all. Mm -mm. Ever. And, yeah. I, never have, are they, they are not parasitic. That yeah. is not their game. No, mm -hmm. no. no, not at all. Mm -hmm. And, and with the way I responded afterwards and was very, um, I'm, went into a tailspin. I didn't mm -hmm. have my protective, right. You know, family around me. And it was such a relief when I found you and, and I'd really even forgotten about this and reconnected mm -hmm. with them. And it was so beautiful and it was so wonderful. And I, I did do some work with them. And I just said, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so sorry. You know, I didn't know. And they actually said, well, it was time for you to be on your own for a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they were completely reasonable, completely kind about it. Of you know, course. I went in and, yeah. and, you know, had that happen, but they said, well, it's time for you to be alone for a bit. We're back. Yeah. We're back. Right. Kick the mantid out of the nest. For a little bit. Yeah. And like you <laughs> said, it's no big deal to them. Cause they always know they're always, like long game, right? They know you'll right. be back and, or yeah. they'll catch you on the flip side somewhere. Right. Yeah. It was right. really, yeah. really an interesting experience. And I so had I'm a super, funny experience. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm so grateful, Jaylene, to have met you and, and to be able to have oh, yeah. made that reconnection now that I understand, you know, that, that they've loved me, you know, I'm, I know. I'm yeah, I know. It was meant to be that we're able to reconnect and have them show up again. It, it makes me so happy that, that, that you had that experience again. Yeah, nice. So cool. So I uh, to took a trip to Shasta recently and um well recently a few months ago and i asked for a man to, to to meet me there it was a ufo conference or an extraterrestrial conference that was in shasta mm -hmm. um and we were staying at a, a being a bread and breakfast bed and breakfast and we were sitting out on the porch and i'd forgotten and i made that intention before we left and that we were sitting out on the porch looking over the mountain and um uh of the the B and B, and I felt something on my shoulder, and Aww. it was kind of warm, so I was uh, wearing sleeveless, and I felt something right here, and I'm like, "Oh, it's a bug!" And I and I went like that real quick, it kind of freaked me out. It was a praying mantis. Oh, and I'm like, "Oh that. no, oh no!" I hope I didn't hurt it, but it oh. it took me a minute before I realized, "Oh, here's my <laughs> mantis." Yeah. So I so I he wasn't he or she wasn't hurt. Felt mailed me wasn't hurt so i picked him up and put him on um on the back of the the seat and he just sat there with me Aww. for the longest time and i was watching him so closely and he was like cleaning himself and just looking at me with these eyes and oh, i love it it was so cool to watch him and and share that time 
with that. There's my mantid. Yes. Oh, oh so I love sweet. it. I love it when they send the little guys, which they told me is kind of like their calling card. Oh. Um, you know, it's not exactly the same, but it's like their way of sharing their energy with the earth. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a really neat story about that too. I was doing, I was in my greenhouse and I had hatched some mantis in there and most of them had gone, you know, they get a certain size and then they go out into the big, big, bad world. Um, but there was a few left in there and I was just sitting doing a meditation and, you know how you go through these different um, cycles where different things come up from different past lives and you can feel it sort of starting to bubble up and in your peripheral awareness and events start happening. So I was having one of those moments. And so I went into a deep gen meditation and asked what I needed to see in this past life. And it was a past life about being with mantis and where they had, um, I was a mantis and they had actually left me on a planet. Well, I had had a chip on my shoulder about them leaving me on the planet and leaving me alone and not coming back for me, right? Mm -hmm. That abandonment feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, because I had always sort of felt that with them when I first met them, I was slightly wary and I knew there was something there. I knew there was an energetic mm, blockage between us. And I wasn't sure what it was. And, and this is, you know, years after I'd start, started being with them, but you know, sometimes it takes a while to <laughs> process these things. Right. But, um, in that lifetime, you know, I had been traveling around with them as a mantis and then we would colonize new planets, right. With bring DNA there. My job was to set up the life there and to bring the DNA and to get it fostered and get it going. Um, and they were called away and they had to leave and they weren't able to come back for me. And so in that meditation, I was very upset and I was crying and I was thinking about how could you not come back for me? And they were very matter of fact about it. They said, we couldn't risk everything else to come back for you. You know, you were but one life and you had agreed to stay there and do this. So it's not that you did it without agreement, but you still felt abandoned, even though you knew that that was what your job was. Right. So for them, they were, they were not unemotional, but they don't get very emotional. Right. They're just a bit more matter of fact, but with love, mm -hmm. as we've said, um, and in that moment, right when I was having that moment of sort of awakening to the fact that they didn't abandon me, I had agreed to it and that I didn't have to carry that burden of feeling abandoned anymore. One of them jumped right on my chest oh. and sat, I looked down and I saw it. And it was just in that moment when I was feeling such an intense amount of love from them and it jumped on my chest and I just had this beautiful connection with the little guy on my chest. And, uh, it, it was one of those moments I'll just never forget. It was just so much healing for me mm -hmm. as a human being. And I was so grateful. They're That's so beautiful. magical. Mm -hmm. You know, they when you are. see them in the physical. Yes. They're so magical. Yeah. You know, that feeling of abandonment. I think some of us feel that now <laughs> as women, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Just well, with what's going I mean, on. as star people, as for me, <laughs> with as a star, um, star being. Yes. I feel abandoned by my family. I've, oh, I know. You know what I, I mean? It. Yeah. And, and I know that it's not true. Yes. But I, I feel those things bubble up every mm -hmm. once in a while. I have memories of a little girl where I'm standing there with my star papa. I called him papa. And he's saying he's take you know, I'm coming back off the ship. And I, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I don't, and I say, don't leave me here. Don't leave me right. here. Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 But, um, it's that's, really I think hard. A lot of people feel that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. because also as human beings, we have such a, an incredible range of emotions here that, you know, <laughs> something that we agreed to do when we were a different type of vibrational being you know, is all well and fine, but as a human trying to process all of the weight of the emotions that we feel vibrationally in our body as, um, corporeal beings is very difficult. And, but it is, you know, it, it's like speed processing of yeah. years and years of, you could call it karma or whatever you want to call it stuck energy or whatever energy that's in your lingering in your Akash, right. It's right 
the intensity of the emotions we feel here really moves that so quickly. Um, but it, it's, it's hard to um, get clear on it or get neutral with it. I think the mantis are really good at teaching us how to be neutral observers though. And I, I try to teach um, my groups that when I do my classes and uh, work with people is really, that's a big part of, the, of their message really is teaching us and the Arcturians as well, how to be neutral observers, to understand how to manage our emotions, not smush your emotions down, but manage them so that you don't react to things so that you can come from a neutral place. And then you can respond in love versus reactive from an emotional hurt place. Um, but that's a big part of their message. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know if you got to have had that same experience with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it really is part of what is part of this evolution of humanity is yeah. getting, being able to manage the emotions and being able to move into that state of neutrality. I love that, that word. I haven't used or heard that word in a while. It's like, oh yeah, neutrality, yeah. you know, when Buddhism teaches that. Yes. You know, it's like the, yes. the middle pillar. It's like being in there. You don't react. You observe, you see, and maybe even feel. Yes. You're not in that out of control. And, and we, as humans, it's very easy for us to move into that yes. out of control energy yes. because it's intense. Mm -hmm. It's intense here. Yeah. And I think intense is okay. As long as we don't get attached yeah. to certain things. And what yeah. I, what I've learned is it's okay to have preferences, um, but not to what, what Jesus said, be of the world, not, or be in the world, not of not it. Of it. Yeah. yeah. And it's okay to have preferences because we're here to have the physical experience on this planet. Right. There's, I don't, you know, for me, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, but not to have that attachment to anything yeah. to where we get bogged down in, um, situations or like you were saying, being neutral and in, in um, that place of not um, getting so caught up in the chaos in any chaos yeah. or any kind of thing that brings us you know that brings us out of our our balance yeah right well, that's balance. when that's when we start causing harm too <clears throat> is when emotions get out of control mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. we harm ourselves yeah. and we harm others mm -hmm. when we can't get a grip <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and yeah. you know it's a it's a lifelong process for all of us because we're right. all going to have our moments um of of losing it right but the important thing is that you always can recognize and come back to neutrality and come back to a place of being centered in your body and um then remember to respond from that place again and and, and go back to the heart, right? Go back to the love. Right. That's their other message too, is that everything comes from that energy, right? That yeah. love energy. That's who we and, are. Yeah. And so it's, it, it's just, that's, I think, uh, Mari's message to me too, which was really important for me to hear at that point at, at every point in my life, I could have used it when I was younger. <laughs> I'll just say that, Mari. <laughs> <Can we all? laughs> I could have used a little bit more coaching on that when I was younger, <laughs> but, but um, isn't that what youth is for? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> to, you know, to, to have that, those experiences where we're, no, it's exactly and, right. You know, and, yeah. and, you know, flying by the seat of our pants kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Not a hundred percent tuned in. That's how you learn. That's yeah. how you learn and, and really process some of that energy. I, I do think we come down for, you know, for this amazing exaggerated processing here. And, um, yeah. we're just clearing so much, yeah. especially in this particular time on the planet, right. Yeah. Because yeah. of the awareness and the energy that's just so amazing. Um, I was just tuning into the energy of July too, before we got on and it feels it feels, wow. It feels really nice. And it feels so heart centered. I'd say I would describe July as a big giant red heart, yeah. um, nice. which was different, right. From June and, and may. And I think that the emotional stuff we went through in June leads us into this place in July, where we can be in that energy of that big red heart. Um, so let's talk about the Arcturians. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Yay. About them. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> 
so let's hear about your Arcturian peeps. So the Arcturians, I met them a little uh, prior to the Mantis because I was doing the Stargate meditations. Um, and, but I didn't start working with them. I would say in a uh, close relationship until the Mantis, I would say are, are the ones that broker the energy field for me, that they manage the energy space for me. And they help me, um, make connections with other beings in a very safe way, in a very safe space. They create that, um, platform for me. Um, and the Arcturians are beings that to me, vibrationally feel the closest to humans of, of all the other star beings that I've connected to. They have, um, a vibration that feels like they are basically us in the future or this, mm -hmm. they're like the next step for humanity, right? As we evolve, we're going to evolve. Um, like it feels like our vibrational track matches theirs very closely. Um, they're also incredibly uh, wonderful healers as well. They do it differently, but the, the mantis are so um, technical with me. We talk about DNA. We talk about this step, this step, this step, this is how you do it. Um, whereas the Arcturians, it's more of like this, um, this incredible energy that they use to me. It's all about blue color blue. I'm always seeing blue. I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have a day where I just want to wear all blue. And I'm like, Oh, the Arcturians are here. You know, I literally, I'm just like blue, blue, blue. And Oh, right. They're here. Um, they, that's how they speak to me through it. Of course, it's always telepathic with both of them, but, um, they're such, uh, their, I would say their medium is vibration. So their medium, both with the mantis and the Arcturians, um, I've worked with them to do sound healing and that's a big part of my healing practice. But so the Arcturians have, um, they heal with sound and light with the mantis. I'm doing usually more with the sound specifically, and it's very targeted and with the Arcturians, it's more of like an overall, like, let's work with your energy body. Let's talk about the energy of who you are. And let's talk about energy mechanics. And they are masters of healing with energy and vibration and using it and light. And like, we're going to, you know, we're going to work with your energy field. And I'm always in people's nervous system with them and, or the whole, um, they call it the external sensing field. They taught me about that. Um, you have the inner um, sensing area, which is the heart, which creates this heart. They call it the heart oscillating frequency. Mm -hmm. It creates this inner frequency. And then you've got this cellular matrix around it, which is the physical being. And then you've got this external sensing body. And these are all terms that came from them. And they talk about how we want to be generating from within, as opposed to always absorbing from without, you know, nice. from outside of us, because when we, we just absorb outside of ourselves, then we're not in control of the way our energy field operates. But when we purposefully move the energy outward from the center of our heart, that heart oscillating frequency, then we're creating the energy field around us. And people talk about, oh, I have to keep my shields up and I have to manage my energy, especially as empaths, right? That's what we're taught. And they're like, no, 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 no. You set the energy tone. You create the field. You're nice. in charge of the energy field around you. You don't have to hide from anyone else's energy. You create an energy that bathes the whole space around you. And then it shifts and brings everything into a different frequency. Um, and I loved that because that's very empowering for humans. Again, humans didn't quite realize that we had this ability to do that. And yet we are energy beings. Wow. And so of course we have the energy, the ability to shift the energy field around us. That that's Well, I, I, I mean, we know we're, you know, we're, we, we are experienced this and we know this, but, but this morning I, um, I was feeling a little out of sorts. So when I'm blessed enough to be, live on the river, so I went out on the river for a little while. I take a paddle, try to take a paddle every day. And now, now the weather's nice. And I was feeling out of sorts on the river when I was out there. And it's, I find so much peace when I'm out there, but I was feeling out of sorts. And I started um, chanting Om Shante mm -hmm. and I'm actually singing it. And I was singing it to myself as I'm going down the river. And I felt just what you were 
uh, describing Jalene how that energy was transforming from the in, transforming me from the inside out, where my mm -hmm. mind became more less um, scattered. I felt more in balance, and um, and my actual view of everything was was clearer. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for sharing that because um, it's. It, it works. It's true. It really works. And it's, yeah. it's simple and profound. It's a profound thing for human beings to come profound. into recognition of that they have this ability to shift the field into whatever they want, especially when people are worried about, oh, a parasitic being or something being on them, stuck on them. Um, you know, it's, it shift your frequency and then you become unsticky, right? If you're right, in right. low vibrational you don't have those state, holes. Yeah. yeah, it's easier for mm -hmm. things to get stuck to you. But if you radiate a really strong frequency, then things do not stick to you, right? Yeah. Right. In the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, so, go ahead. I was going to say, I know my Arcturian guide, Ryobi, who works with me. Oh yeah, um, Ryobi. And right. it, and it's I love so, that name. It's, yeah. And it's so funny because somebody goes, that's that's the name of a tool manufacturer. And I went, well, that's just perfect. <laughs> it is actually, they're so technical, right? Yeah. It was hilarious. I was like, oh my God, that's great. But what's interesting is they've really been working with me and, and you know, through me with students and clients is that creating that toroidal field, that heart yes. field that is, that is there and how important it is right now, especially for us to be developing that and really strengthening it because it, instead of the world coming in on you, you begin yes. to impress out into the world and you create your own reality. And this is how we're shifting paradigms. Exactly. This is part of this whole new earth 5D, whatever, you know, we want to call this experience mm -hmm. and experiment that we're in is that learning to master your fields. Yeah, right? absolutely. That's emotion. what they, they, um, I taught a course with them called mastering your environment. And mm -hmm. it, it really is all about recognizing that you, you know, you're not victims here. We're not victims as humans. We're not the, we don't have to look up to all the other energy beings around us. We're the same as them. We're just in a different form right now. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's time for us to sort of wake up to that ability so that we don't have to always feel like, ooh, 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 something's going to get me, yeah. you know? Right. Or, or depending on what we might call higher beings to, um, to make our decisions for us and things like that. Exactly. Right. Save yeah. us and rescue us. Rescue yeah, us. no, yeah. it's there. Yeah. Both the Mantis and the Arcturians definitely teach a lot about um, you know, personal empowerment, but also mm -hmm. taking responsibility for yourselves. We right. like to hand away our power or we don't want to step into it sometimes. Cause it's like, Oh gosh, but then what am I going to have to do? That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. And the irony is it that it's a work, lot of work <laughs> down well, here. <laughs> the, the work stops. I think once you, you know, once you you're right. get into the mode of generating your own power. I think it feels like work in the beginning. And then once you learn how to do it, you're like, oh, this isn't hard. You just start doing it automatically. It just becomes natural. And this, it is, becomes how, natural. And this is who we really are. The other right. is not natural. And we no. talk about this all the time. The other is not natural. This yeah. is when no. you are in tune with yourself and you have everything and you know, you have everything you need within you, then that's natural. It becomes natural. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And that's Again. effortless. Yeah. Let me ask you a question real quick, Jalen. Oh, yeah. um, just real quick. The Arcturians, uh, do you have a sense of what they look like or have you seen them? Because I've been seeing these beings lately that are appearing to me that have um, the big, um, they're human. They don't have the big eyes or human, maybe a little almond humanized, but they have a big bald head and um, it's uh, not, but they're human and they have th the most radiant light around mm. them. And and radiating from them and i've seen one recently where she had the robes on you know the high collar mm -hmm. uh -huh. and a, a gold um brocade robe all around uh -huh. her. so i was wondering how you see them and i thought i i feel they're arcturian i don't know but so that's really amazing that you just asked me that i was just about to say oh. before asking that question that the arcturians um connected me with this other group of beings called the divinians and you sound like you're describing one of them. Divinians. And, yeah. And the, oh, um, 
the Arcturians are the way that I've always described it is that the Davidians are so much further away, you know, it's not like it's um, in light years away, but that's kind of the way I visualize it because I'm a human, uh, but it's, it's, it's like, they're further, they're just further away for me to connect to. They were harder for me to connect to. So the Arcturians acted as like a way station in between mm. or a bridge. So they bridged me to the Divinians. The Divinians have these very enormous heads. They look humanoid, but they have these enormous heads. And they um, taught me about how um, our brain is not meant to start atrophying, but neuroplasticity is supposed to continue and that we don't end up living as long because our brains start degrading. But part of that is because of our genetics and the way our genetics has been modified, but also it's mm -hmm. because of our belief systems and our thought processes that as you age, you know, your brain starts to deteriorate. And, and of course, it's also because of the toxins that we're exposed to and things like that here. Um, there's a whole host of reasons, but they've come to tell me that this is the evolution of humans is that our brains are going to get to a point where they continue to grow. And then we will have um, the, the type of skull that will also be able to expand and our brains will grow. And it, they basically are saying to us, look in your evolution of moving from being a completely corporeal being into a less corporeal being, you know, you'll have different states of existence along the way. We want you to know that you are meant to have an ever expanding brain as well. And that with that comes higher abilities and more functionality of who and what you are as an energy being in having a, a physical experience. Um, and, and I believe that they are connected to the Arcturians. I don't know if they're connected genetically or evolutionarily, but the Arcturians always served. And so the Arcturians to me, look similar to that, but maybe not with such big heads, mm -hmm. um, smaller heads, but, um, definitely blue. And they have always connected me to the Divinians. The Divinians I feel though, are, are coming in closer now. So it's not as, as important for me to move through the Arcturians to get there energetically. Um, and they've been, I think also coming in too, because we're going through so much change and shift right now that they're showing up more to say, Hey, okay, look, you guys, your DNA is really starting to radically change and our right. DNA is changing yeah. right. big yeah. time. And so then they can come in and start to work with us on, um, literally shifting some of our physical attributes, not just our genotype, but the phenotype as well. And, you know, I want to say, I've never heard of the Divinians, mm -hmm. but as you're talking, Jaylene, all of a sudden I'm feeling this great being coming in with that beautiful robe with the golden brocade and it's all just and it's almost like um see-through in a way and yes I just got they are this, this this we're here uh, <laughs> it's like oh nice. my gosh i never <laughs> seen them so thank you guys for bringing that up yeah it's so cool i'm getting chills all up and down my spine i feel like i'm gonna cry oh <laughs> yeah they're they're amazing oh. I'm so excited about what's happening to our DNA right now um, with all of the energy that we've been exposed to over the past several months. I mean, and yes, years, but really it's really ramped up over the right. last six months, big time, massively. Um, our DNA is really, really changing right now. I'm super excited about it. It's really fun to talk to the Mantis about and the Arcturians about it and Divinians because they really... Um, it's like they're rubbing their hands together too. Like, oh, it's going to be so fun for you guys to start <laughs> having more abilities and more awareness of mm -hmm. us and everything else around you. And um, because it's really been muted, right? And, and the yes. more that humans start to wake up to what's actually around them energetically, I think that some of the petty things that we get caught up on will start to diminish yeah. quite a bit. And you know, what's interesting too, is I had some information come through not too long ago where the whole 5g thing that everybody is so upset about. I mean, uh -huh. there are aspects of it that are, are unhealthy for us, yeah, for but sure. it's also part of the amperage. It's uh -huh. part of what's amping stuff up. Mm -hmm. And so it's not completely, yeah. 
it's not complete. That's interesting. I hadn't even really yeah. thought about that's that, but that's, that. that's true. Yeah. 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 And what I was getting is that, um, and unfortunately people that aren't healthy within their bodies and within their, um, yeah. Yes. Psyche or their energetic field that yeah. they will be, um, affected the worst yeah. with, um, the yeah. higher amps. Is a, yeah, a higher frequency, and just like with yeah. um, what you were saying, Jaylene, is the the energies are coming in, the um, solar flares or whatever is yes. coming in to help us ramp up our DNA. That then people are being affected, what they might think is negatively, when mm -hmm. it's it's just because the things aren't in can't handle so much yeah. frequency, higher frequency. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, okay. So pick your timeline. Where do you want to live? Right. Mm -hmm. right exactly. Pick your timeline. Pick, you don't, that needs to be a t-shirt. Pick no your more way, like way, way. <laughs> Just pick your timeline and go there. I mean, just <laughs> make it happen. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it's just like a full moon. I've always uh, got the impression and the intuition that the full moon is the reason people go crazy is because it's drawing on the planet. So bringing all the stuff that's been, um, you know, hidden, right. pushed down the all the emotional baggage and stuff is being brought to the surface. And that's why we see so much craziness during a full moon. Oh yeah. And so that's what I'm getting with all, also all these, um, fla yeah. solar flares and all the energy yeah. that's being ramped up is things are coming up. Oh Yeah. I mean, could you believe the June full moon with the solstice oh, and the, yeah. oh my goodness. I just thought, whoo, hanging yeah. on, hanging on to the table. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was <laughs> intense. It was so intense. It was so intense. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I even lost bits of and pieces of just time. Yeah. You know, where it's like, all of a sudden it's three o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, what the heck have I been doing? And I, and, you know, it's not like I'm losing, you know, completely losing it, you know, like I've been taken off planet or something, but yeah. when I look back, how it's do like, you know, how do you know? Or <laughs> it is, <laughs> true. True. but it's cool. It's like, I can track what I've done, you know, when maybe I got some water and maybe I put a load of laundry in and you know maybe mm -hmm. I fed the cat and maybe I read a book and maybe you know but like five <laughs> or six hours is gone right and, I could, and it's weird and I just I had that happen a couple times and I finally went I'm gonna take a day off and I'm going down yes I'm gonna hydrate right. hydrate hydrate I'm gonna fast for the day <laughs> I'm going down because I wasn't sure if I was losing it or yeah or if maybe I was going out you know I may have been I did actually think seriously about that Sharon until you just said that it was like Meh. <laughs> well you know with yeah. my dreams especially I've um been yeah they're kind of it's almost like a bleed through I'm an outer body traveler to Jaylene and I mean, Michelle knows mm -hmm. this but um and we've talked before so you may not remember but it's like there's a bleed through there where oh, yeah not, you know it's like okay what reality or what timeline <laughs> am I in now yes I Pick have to think line. about it. <laughs> I was thinking about that too. Um, I was just on vacation with my family and actually we flew on the solstice. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought oh, it was like the only flight we could find when I was booking. And I thought, okay, I'm about to book a flight on <laughs> the solstice and this crazy energy. It'll be amazing. I literally stayed in meditation almost the entire flight because I was like, come on, we got to, we got to transfer through Dublin. We're going to make it right. We're gonna, Our luggage <laughs> is going to make it. And uh, we did, we all made it, but there was some snafus along the way. I could tell that it was very easy for things to, <laughs> I could tell for the timeline, the timeline was abundantly available to not get there, <laughs> but we, we made it. Um, but uh, uh, I got to keep remember. I totally lost my train of thought of what I was saying about that. Oh, bleed traveling. Through. The yeah, bleed through. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes it seems like when we change our environment, which I think is a really good thing to do, by the way, is somehow change your environment, whether you go on a road trip or, you know, you go to a different, even mundane things, like go to a completely different grocery store than you normally go to, right? Just change your environment in some way, um, sleep in a different room, do something. Um, because my dreams were 
different there. And I felt like I was having a lot of bleed through. I was on different soil, right? I was in France and I felt very much like, oh, I've been here before. And the dreams were that way as well. I felt like I was releasing and experiencing things like I was literally walking around and in that dream state, right. And, and having those fourth or fifth dimensional experiences, um, in that state and yeah, just revisiting a lot of revisiting. I just felt very much like, oh, I've definitely lived here before and done this before feels very comfortable for me here. I could live here again easily. (laughs) It just like my energy was definitely jiving with it. So I think, um, yeah, right now the dreams are major, major. And with the full moons, right. That always brings up the dreams (laughs) and dirty amps it up amps mm-hmm. it up. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, we kind of got off our mantis mantis peeps there for a while in our Arcturians, but <laughs> oh, Hey, that's what, that's what we were saying. We, we never know what's going to come under. <laughs> yeah. We haven't gotten nearly off track as far as we I know. usually do. <laughs> you know, we start out with ETs and we end up, you know, building site lows and yeah, and calling Brazil. Elon Musk on the phone. <laughs> that's right. right. We, did, we had to call Elon Musk one day. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's no, great. I have a question. And no about... alcohol involved either. No. Okay. Or, drugs. Needed. or drugs. Or drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick question about the mantids. Yeah. Are they, do they have planets or stars that they live on or are from, or are they spaceship people? Yeah, they have never told me, well, they live wherever they're stationed. So they, okay. I, I've talked to them about their origins that, um, and I've talked to them about, you know, where they come from. So asking them where they come from is one of those things where they'll say, well, do you want to know when we were a, an expression of source. Is that what you want to know? Cause that's where we yes. came from. Right. Okay. And that's basically yep. where we all came from, but then from their, their purpose, or they said the thought it's like, God had a thought. And then there was these beings, right. Was to have an ambassador to seed life, right. To spread life around, to create expression and experience through expression, right. Through uh, physical expression, or just to build worlds. They build worlds through, um, through energy and through, they talked to me though, about how they spent the first, um, part of their existence in a very high dimensional state. And they learned gradually how to move into each dimension, lower dimension, it's more difficult to operate in the lower dimensions. It's easier in the higher dimensions. So it's not like we might think of a ladder and you've got to go up. It's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. You can operate very freely and easily in the upper dimensions, and you've got to really learn and understand how to master the lower dimensions. So when I meet them and they're at, at all around the table, each one of those different mantids sitting around the table has a different vibrational frequency, meaning they match a different dimension. So one might be what we would consider in our simplistic view of third dimensional, fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional. So they help me to have experiences and work in those different dimensional spaces based on where they sort of uh, vibrationally match to. And so they are masters at all those different energetic spaces because they create in all those different energetic spaces, they create life. And so they had to learn. So they said it wasn't until, you know, what we might think, I don't know how many billions of years that they mastered this dimension, right. And that they were able to create life here. And earth is a very, very sacred being to them. And they have been here basically since she's been here, right. The whole primordial soup, everything that's part, what they're part of. And so they've been here caretaking the earth as a partner to her. And so that's why I was saying the ones that I've worked with are the ones that have been here. I would say they're from here, but they're, are they from here? No, they're from everywhere. So I think they're interdimensional beings that don't have, or have the need to have a particular planet that they would call home because they're 
all over the place. Yeah. Thank you. If because I when share... I whoop, go oh, ahead, go ahead, Michelle. Quick, yeah. When I've asked them that question, like like show me your planet or your star or even your ships. Yeah. All I get is flying through space. Yeah. Right. It's like whoosh, yeah. It's like so is that your star or what was that your planet? Or, you know, they're like, nope. No. <laughs> yeah. So thank we you for answering that. Everywhere. Now it makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had um, a very clear when I, meditation many 20 years ago or so. One of those meditation journeys that you just don't forget, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and it was where I was shown. Uh, and they were mantid beings, but they weren't the high vibrational. I mean, they were, they were very loving beings, um, but they were on a planet. And I got that it was your Ur Uranus, Uranus. Okay. Um, they, they, they were on that planet. They lived on that planet. And this was long, long, long time ago is what they were showing me. Long, long time ago. The, um, there was, uh, during the galactic war times mm -hmm. uh, there was uh some baddies reptilians uh you know the probably sakar or, or the um elites that came from the orion wars and have or infiltrated their planet and caused explosions on their planet, some kind of a nuclear explosion mm -hmm. and it sent the planet on a tilt they asked the syrians for help I get emotional talking about it. And um, the Syrians came to help them and they took them off the planet who, who they could, because they were in physical form. They were in 3D, oh, 3D physical okay. form. Right. Um, so they weren't in that high vibrational state yet mm -hmm. where they didn't need to take physical form. Um, and I didn't know anything about Uranus that it, that it was not, it was at the time it, when I saw this um, meditation, and I looked up Uranus and it said there in the the astronomy um, uh, sites say that it is on a tilted axis. Oh, wow. And I had no idea. Wow. Yeah. That's so fascinating. <laughs> but it's a gas planet, right? Well, that's what we think anyway. What do we know? That's, yeah. yeah. What do we know? <laughs> well, this was a long during the wars where a lot had... Uh, things change yeah things change over was, time yeah and if, yeah. if there was a nuclear explosion on it, it or, or something like that it was really catastrophic for it might have become a gas planet from yeah. that explosion yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely um i i say that well what do we know as a little jab to all my scientist friends that <laughs> i know and love <laughs> well what do we know what do we know you know it's so interesting i know we think we know a lot but and most I, of us lies anyway, <laughs> we're well, finding out. I was yeah. watching something on, on uh, YouTube about the pyramid and they're still talking that pyramids, a tomb, you oh. know, the great pyramid. And it's like, right. Why is this stuff still out there? I know yeah. why, like, oh my gosh, oh my why gosh. is it still being taught that way? It's <laughs> disappointing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and so many things they, and even, you know, medical doesn't take the energy body into account. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of things. It's it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. fascinating the way that is. But you know, we're we're all learning. We're all. You know, learning what's really so cool quickly. is I know a lot of nurses that are Reiki masters. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Nurses are natural Reiki yeah. masters. I think mm -hmm. that probably every nurse in some lifetime has been some sort of you know right. <laughs> energy master. Energy, energy master. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to be to do that profession. It's so hands-on and such an energy exchange constantly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes yeah. a special kind of person to be a nurse. Oh, it really does. Yeah. It, yes. It's not something I could do. And I'm, you know, I'm an energy healer. Right. Big time. But right. be a nurse. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, built kind of, that. not this time around yeah <laughs> not exactly. this time around yeah i think i probably have in the past which is why i'm saying mm -mm, not this time. exactly <laughs> i did that check that box <laughs> oh my gosh this That's has been so one. great yeah. yes i love talking fun. to you too it's always so <sighs> fun you're, you're so likewise. cool 
Mm-hmm. Well, now, Jaylene, if people want to find out more about you, about you offer sessions, you teach classes. I do, I do. Where are they going to find you? And I'll put information okay. um, when we get this up and out. And I'll, I'll get your bio and get all that from you. But let us know where where the heck do we find you? Yeah. So you can find me at my website. It's probably the easiest way. So I have an online community that's called um, the um, Light Vibes Community. And that is um, a a community that I have that we meet um, just about once every 10 days online. And I do a meditation for them and talk about the current energy and do many sessions for people. Um, and so that I have that group going on. So that's one way of connecting with me is to join the light vibes group. It's really, and where reasonable. is that? So, right. That's a good question. It's there's the <laughs> light vibes um, or you can, to make it easy, you guys will have the spelling of my name, um, is Jaylene Tracy.com is my website. And then there's a link to the light vibes community from the main website. And that's also where you can, um, book sessions with me. So uh, over the past year, I've been doing sessions for the people in my light vibes community only, but I'm about to open it back up to doing sessions for everyone. Anyone does, you don't have to be a member of the light vibes community to do a session with me. Um, I'm ready to do more, more healing work, more one-on-one work again, you know, we all go through cycles and, Mm -hmm. and so I'm ready to do more of those again. And my session work is really sound healing, working with the mantis and the Arturians and other beings that come in or whomever is connected to just like you two, whoever comes, whoever shows up, right. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to be a part of the session will be acknowledged and helps create the space, right. For the healing do, I do a lot of what you were um, actually what you both mentioned. I think all of our work is pretty congruent with one another, right. We, we go into that soul and we see what is going on energetically. And if it's past life energy that needs to be cleared, or if it's something in the um, physical body that needs to be cleared, whatever, and however, and, and the backstory, because a lot of times the backstory is really helpful in getting somebody cleared up. Right. So um, that's, that's what I do. And I just love it. I love working with people. I love working with groups and I'm teaching really excited later this summer, I'm going to teach, um, a course all about DNA and that's going to be all very mantis driven, um, teaching all about our DNA, the 12 strands of the DNA, what's happening to it right now, how we can really get involved with working with our DNA directly and how we can activate aspects of our DNA. That's been uh, muted or turned off and turn that back on and get those abilities back online. That's all coming on really quickly right now for humanity. And so they sort of tasked me with bringing this information forward and sharing it. So um, I'm excited about that. I would love oh, yeah. to join that with That me. sounds amazing. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Make sure you keep us in the loop. I will. I will. I will. I'll let Keep you know. It, do you have a, a um, mailing list or anything like that? I do. Yeah. So when you go to the website, jaylentracy.com, okay. there is a place to sign up for the website. Uh, uh, sorry for the newsletter mm-hmm. um, or join the light vice community, or um, I post blog posts there too. So great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. This yeah. has been awesome. I love you, Jaylee. I love you both too. Thank you so much and for I inviting me you. onto your show. It's so fun. Oh, I love it. Fun. I love it. We'll have to do it again if we can ever, you know, harangue or what's what's um wrangle. Harangle you. Wrangle, wrangle. Thank you. Not harangue you. I'll try not to harangue you, but um, although we will if you don't behave harangue. yourself. Exactly. <laughs> Feel free. You can harangue me anytime you want. Okay. <laughs> yeah, to come back on and chat again. Oh yeah, it's so right. fun. There's so much going on, right? There's always something to talk about. It's yeah. We are woo. We are in a steady clip of change. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are, and it's so and it's exciting. So, it is, and it, it happens is. so quickly, like you're saying, Jenny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it 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 really does. It happens so quickly. One thing you, if you don't take care of something one moment the next day it's like a whole it seems like a whole week has gone by and it's like uh, wait a minute I was just <laughs> yeah I why I did know. I put that off till tomorrow because it's old news kind of thing if that yeah. makes any sense 
Yeah. 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 Yep, that yep. was, and time has gotten so stretchy and wobbly too. So stretchy, bendy, wobbly. Yes. <laughs> it's so strange. It's it either is... like boom, 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 or it's mm -hmm. wow. Yes. Wow, yeah. I mean, why that is why it is. So, and I think this is why they've been training us all this time to project our own energy, because if you project a really high frequency vibration out, then you really do manage your time as well. Yeah. yeah. That is the way it's going to, it's going to be. Uh, and so, yeah, they're, they're like, Hey, training wheels are off now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> guess what? what we've been telling you for all these years <laughs> yeah very true right yeah, yeah. I yes. know that's Fun. that's one thing that's been coming through with my community is it's like we're here the time is now yes you know it's like we okay told ya, it. it was coming <laughs> wee, wee, this is not a drill this is, exactly. this right? is no longer a drill <laughs> this is not a test all okay, boots no. on the ground all boots on the ground uh-huh and yep. it's exciting yeah. it's super exciting because it's all good it is that's it the is. thing it's all good yeah so beautiful Definitely. Jamie, yeah, this right. has been awesome thank mm -hmm. you so thank much. you both so much so yeah much. it's super yes. fun Okay. Yay. And yeah. And Sharon, I love you, man. I love you. Mwah. I love you too, Shaylee. Mwah. <laughs> we this love you guys. Around. Thank you so much. This has been so fun. And uh, again, I will get this up and we'll get the information. If anybody needs to, or has comments, please make comments below. Please um, subscribe. Please put this, you know, get yourself a notification where we get uh, uh, shows up every week. We do live at the on the fourth Thursday of every month. That's the goal. <laughs> I keep forgetting, but the goal is, and then we always go sideways because that's how Sharon and I work. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, next week we're talking to RevNet. Yes. Oh, that's so great. So oh, I look good. forward to listening to that. Yeah. yeah, he's so awesome. And I've never done a show with him. Oh, he's I, so much fun. Yep. I've been talking to him on Facebook. I met him through Third Eye Salon where we yes. all met together, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah. we go back and forth and I just love his energy. So I'm really looking forward. It to is that. fantastic. I love every time he comments on something. I'm like, oh my gosh, that man's just a giant heart. I love him. He is. He is. Totally. Yeah. So cool. That's good. So thank good. you, everybody. Thank you to everybody who's watched this again. Please make comments. We do moderate the the comments after the show, after what we do, you know, I, and while I know I do, Sharon, do you do that too? I do. Oh, but, yes. Cause I thought so. I was all of a sudden went, Oh, Mary, <laughs> we've never talked about that. <laughs> I, not as often as I should, but yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we check, we'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. So again, subscribe notifications, make some comments and we love all of you for listening to new earth rising. So thank you guys. So many blessings and mwah, it's all about love. Yes, mwah. Peace <laughs> out. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>